Okay, thank you very much, Daniel. Um, next up, we've got Paul. Now, Paul, I only asked him to do this uh, talk this morning, or he volunteered this morning. I asked morning. you to do this, <laughs> if I could do this. Yeah, so this is, this is a, the shortest, the record shortest notice by only 12 hours, <laughs> which is a worry. Okay. Not, not okay. a problem. Over to Paul. Cool, thank you. Um, who here spends their life reading log files? Cool, and most of you, I imagine, read these log files in an SSH terminal or something like that, yeah? Cool, okay, I've been looking around for an application to do something like this for years and years. And I, I got really sick of the idea that uh, my code editors could do lovely syntax highlighting and my logs were in plain black and white. And then I discovered a program called LNAV. So LNAV, you point it at a directory, let's say my log directory, which I've just copied from my home server. Um, so what that does is read every single file in that directory even if it's gzip or bzip in, um, compressed, and it, dis it sorts all the lines together in timestamp order. So you see, you can see that the left hand most column is a little marker that says which file each line comes from, uh, and then we've got the lines sorted together, it understands the timestamps, it, it does things like uh, if this timestamp doesn't include the year, it will base it off the year of the start of the, when the file was modified and so forth. And then it sorts them all together. But it also does things like, so this we can see syslog ng, uh, which produces logs roughly in syslog output. So demont is my server. That gets its own color if, it, if there are other uh, machines that's an identifier, they get a separate colour, so it's really easy to see those machines turning up. Uh, likewise, the facility that turns up, the postfix, it turns up in a different colour, so it's easy to see all those postfix um, send and SMTP lines turning up. Uh, it will recognise IP addresses and highlight them in the same format, so it's easy to recognise an IP address as it's turning up multiple times in the log. Error lines turn up in red. Warning lines turn up in yellow. So they're easy to see as well. Um, you can define your own formats too, and there's a whole bunch of things you can do with that. Um, the, so one of the things that was nice when I first started using this was you start uh, typing regular expressions. Let's say I want to find uh, statistics, S-T-A-T. -T. Oh, look, it's highlighting it in real time. Okay, cool, that shows me when I'm getting matches. Uh, I can see, oh, if, I'm, if I've mistyped my regular expression, this is a fully Perl compatible regular expression, so it's got lots of power, um, and I can make sure that I'm actually matching the thing that I expect to match. Um, then I can use the usual less kind of N to move forward, shift N to move back along those log lines. Um, but one of LNAV's really powerful features is that because it understands the time format, if I want to move back an hour, I do just do shift O, and that moves back an hour. If I want to move back a day, I move, do shift D. So you can skip forward and backward through your log files really easy, easily to find those, that particular time. If someone says, oh, something happened at 10.56 last night, that's an easy time to find, and you don't have to particularly guess about what log line format you're looking for. Um, the, <clears throat> the other useful feature from this view, can anyone, everyone read that vaguely? I know it's not the best contrast or anything, but um, the, one, the other interesting thing you can do is get a log histogram. So I gives me a histogram of when log lines occur, and the little uh, graph down the left hand side shows me um, when those log lines occur. Ah, oh, okay, That's a f there's a fair number of lines at that point. There are one error, two warnings. So shift I, that takes me to that point in time. So I can actually zoom in on the, the time in the log logs that sh is showing me a lot of errors or a, a lot of log lines and so forth. Um, 
trying to think of all of the different features that it has that I can demo. One of the uh, advanced features that I'm, I'm still trying to come to terms with, uh, so each log file, uh, you can set up um, uh, regular expressions with named sub-expressions that uh, find fields in that log file. So I can do p and say, OK, that tells me from the syslog uh, information, I can tell the host name, the proc name, the PID. OK, that's good. So let's write an SQL query. Select uh, log underscore proc name count star from log, sorry, syslog log. Does times um, tab completion uh, group by log proc name yeah that one <laughs> live demos so there's some statistics on the the lines that turn the uh, log the processes that are turning up in my log uh, and what what's most common kernel hmm okay so I better watch out for that um, and that uh, query system alone has been really useful for some of the complex queries especially with things like uh, S-trace logs, which it also understands. Uh, so you can say, show me all of the times that the function was right and the log, the error code at the end of the line wasn't zero. Uh, that sort of stuff. Um, cue to get out of that. Um, pointed at my... Um, oh, the other little useful thing uh, for those people who end up SSHing into remote systems and don't necessarily want to install a whole bunch of things, it compiles as a static binary. Um, so you just copy that around. Um, you can set up your own log file formats. Uh, so that will give you the regular expression, the fields that are expecting out of, get out of it, uh, what the error and warning and info and debug message look messages look like what sort of keywords to expect from that what timestamp format it is it's if, if it's in a really weird thing um, and that will understand that uh, that will also allow you to say okay you know this particular field uh, so if I look at H HTTPD logs um, that tells me oh, that's right um, so you can see the, the IP addresses are different um, colors. The URL is a different color because that's an identifier too. So it's nice to see what's requesting that. Um, and if, if there are errors, which are, there aren't in this particular example, they, they would be sorted in as well. Um, but I'm not interested in any logs that bots have produced. So I want to filter out filter dash out bracket um, bot or spider. This is case insensitive by default. And that has filtered out every line that contained bot or spider in it. Um, that I find incredibly useful, say, for reading syslog, where I don't want to see all the times that cron ran. I just want to see the other interesting stuff. I can filter that out. You can have multiple filters. Um, so, and you can filter in things, although I've never yet found a use for that. Um, the, um, the other thing I was going to touch on is that you can, uh, so you can write your own filters, and you put them in slash your home directory dot lnav slash um, formats, and then uh, you can check out, so I have a GitHub, um, on my GitHub account, I have a repository called LNAV Formats. 
You can check that directory out into the LNAV formats directory, and it will read all of the JSON configurations that are in that, as well as the default, as well as yours, so you get everyone's filters. So it's a really good way of um, not only being able to share, you use your own filters, but uh, share designs as well. Um, there's a bunch of other really useful things that this does that I can't remember off the top of my head now because I'm running on adrenaline. Um, you can pass in a file, a directory, multiple directories. What does it find by default? Yeah, I mean, it, it will find everything in that directory. It doesn't do subdirectories of that, but it will do um, just the, everything in that directory. Um, yeah. It doesn't deal with journal D logs. That would be my one disappointment with it so far. Um, but I'm, it, it's still an early project. Um, it, oh, it's worth pointing out. Um, you can get this in Fedora uh, or on the EPEL repo for CentOS, and I think there's a Debian uh, call. Uh, but it's under a fair bit of active development um, from, at the moment, the only developer um, who's really keen to get you know, bug reports and new feature ideas and things like that and works on it pretty quickly. So if, you, uh, if you're interested, I'd recommend at this stage checking it out from source. It uh, has a modicum of requirements, but nothing runtime. Yeah? Is it using the Grunt? Not as far as I know. Um, For the pattern matching stuff? Like it uses PCRE. Yeah, the Grunt's a pattern library on top of the PCRE. Okay, well, I haven't seen that, so. No, no, no LibGrok. Yeah? Um, is it constantly reading from the directory, so is it live updating? Yes. The question is, is it constantly, uh, constantly reading? And yes, it acts like tail dash F. So if you point it at a directory that's still getting log files written into it, then it will, they will be updating as well. Yeah. Does it understand? It does. Um, if there's no uh, timestamp on the, ti the standard in, you can give it a flag, which will add the timestamp of when that log line was read. Uh, which again is a nice way of saying, oh, this, this make took a little, that bit took a little longer than usual. So, yeah. More questions? Yeah. Can you uh, what into it? Uh, you can pipe into it because of the standard in input. Um, I don't know if you can. Uh, ask it to attach to other pipes uh, or named pipes. Um, you can't toggle columns because it's really just trying to display the text line as it gets it. Um, I would really like a, a way, and I've suggested this, and it's still sort of chugging around there, uh, a way of making a substitute expression in your log. So if I if I don't like the fact that sometimes this turns up as a, um, you know, a, a short name where I need a full, piece, um, a full, fully qualified domain name because everything else has a F FQDN, then I can do a. You know, I'd like to be able to substitute this pattern, this match, uh, or this output string, that sort of stuff. How are we going? Cool. Thank you. It's, this has really changed my life, so check it out. <laughs>